QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Receive Payment Transaction and Form. Let's do it with Intuit QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize on the home page. View drop down. Noting we got the hide icon bar open. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable, fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems PDF files and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it Open windows lists checked off open windows open on the left hand side reports drop down company and financial let's open up that PL, that profit and loss that income statement range and changing 010123 to 123 for the practice problem january to december finally there's some activity let's customize it then font and numbers so we can increase the size of that font let's take it to 12 let's take it to 12 just to be consistent here okay let's go to the reports drop down again company and financial this time the balance sheet customize it with a range in changing 010123 to 123. then we'll go to the fonts and the numbers to change the size of that font to 12 again okay yes and okay that's the setup process we've been doing every time in prior presentations we set up our company file then we entered some transactions which are typically going to be unique to the setup process of the company financing the capital to be used to buy the necessary property and equipment as well as inventory we did that by increasing the checking account for investments that we as the owner put in and a loan that we took out in order to finance the purchase of the fixed assets that we need which were going to be the property plant and equipment and then we also financed the purchase of inventory because we are the type of business that's going to be selling inventory and then finally we were able to make some sales last time and that recorded an increase to the accounts receivable the other side then going to the income statement however although we have income we have not yet collected on the income we don't have the cash flow yet because we're using an accrual system and we invoiced the customer now then we've got to be tracking the receipt of the payment which is what we'll be doing this time so if i go back to the balance sheet we now have some amounts and we had some amounts from the beginning balances as well that we transferred in from the prior accounting system that we imagined we used prior to transferring to the QuickBooks, entering those beginning balances in. The ones we entered for accounts receivable were supported by the customers. QuickBooks, in essence, making an invoice for them so that we can receive the payment in the normal accounting process from this point. So we're looking at that accounts receivable. We can also see the breakout of that accounts receivable by going to the reports drop down and then the customers and receivables. Let's look at it by the customer balance detail and let's customize this let's go to the fonts and numbers let's make this one a little bit bigger too because we might spend some more time on it and so there we have it i'll make this a little bit wider here so this breaking out our receivables by customer matching out to the 28 725 50 if i go back on over to the balance sheet that should be matching here now, most of the time when we're trying to collect on payments for the receivables, we'll be doing so in the customer center, which you can do by going to the homepage, customer center here, or we can find by going to the customer dropdown, customer center here. And if we're contacting the customers and so on and so forth, we're probably gonna be going to their customers and jobs, and then those individual customers and saying, hey, look, we sent you out an invoice. We would like to be collecting uh, on the invoice I'm going to go to all up top make sure you got all checked off and then we can see the invoice is this way we can also sort the open invoices by going to the transactions going to invoices 
and then we can have all invoices or possibly just the open invoices to track the ones that we have not yet received payments on. Note also, we could go to the homepage as we're trying to track the invoices because when we send out the invoice, we'll probably mail the invo invoice out when we create it. But then periodically, monthly, for example, we might make our statements, which are, which are gonna, hold on a sec, not that one. We might make our statements, which are gonna allow us to kind of group all the outstanding invoices together possibly and send out reminders of the fact that the people were trying to collect on our invoices, which could be a tedious task when you're dealing with accounts receivable. So the next step then is gonna be that we're gonna receive the payment on the invoice as we can see with the flow chart. So if I go into the receive payment, note that although this is still a form kind of uh, kind of thing, it's a form data entry form, it's usually more of an internal form for us to populate the connection of the invoice to the receive payment and then to have it facilitate you know, the transaction. In other words, we're probably not as often giving this form to uh, the clients or the customers, although we might as a kind of verification or receipt of the payment. So what we will do here is we'll, we'll connect this out. So this is gonna be connected. So if I was to say, say Mr. Anderson was paying us, the outstanding invoices would then be populated below and we can select an outstanding invoice. I'm gonna select, for example, this one. If you do not enter an amount received, QuickBooks automatically calculates the amount uh, as you select each invoice. So in other words, instead of me populating the amount I got, I'm clicking off the invoice here and it's populating the amount automatically. So I did it in kind of reverse order. I don't wanna see that message again. So I'm gonna say, don't uh, show me that please, QuickBooks for paraphrasing. Okay, so there it is. So now it's connecting that invoice. Now, if I was to go into that invoice by double clicking it, you can see the invoice here. You can see it hasn't yet uh, been a paid invoice. You can see more detail the open balance and so on on the right with this little carrot icon. Closing that back out. And so we're connecting the customer payment to the invoice. Also just kind of realize the name of this form is a little tricky because if you go to the home page, it's called receive payment. And then when you go into the actual form in the data input, in the data input field, it's called a customer payment. And then when you when you try to see it in the ledger, as we'll see when we when we drill down the transactions on the financial statement, it'll just be called payment, I believe. So there's kind of different terminology. You gotta be able to tie those things together. It'll make it a lot easier to understand what is going on with it. Now, if we receive payment from Anderson, we're imagining they paid us uh, $5,000. And then the date, let's pick it as 01-18-23. And then the question is, how did they pay us? Now, for many cases, this is gonna be kind of a reference tool, meaning if I choose cash versus check, it'll give me some different options down here to add a check number, but there's not a material difference in the transaction that will be recorded in the financial statements because I'm just recording the same transactions that will be impacting the same couple accounts. However, if I wanted to sort by payment form, then this could be another nice sorting tool when I start to sort my, my reports. So if I choose cash, you get the reference number field. If I use check, I have a check. That means I got a check from the customer in the mail possibly, and I'm choosing their check number, not the checks that we write, the check that they gave us for reference. Visa, we got the payment information, the card and the expiration and so on with a, with a credit card. And then an e-check format if it was an electronic transfer of some kind and then you could add other payment options if there were other payment options you can go into the list and add more uh, payment options if you if you would like to break those down in a different way note the default goes into undeposited funds here also note that if you don't see this field at all then that's because we turned it on in the preferences to see it which is in the edit drop down preferences and if you go into the payment down here, payments, and then the company preferences, this I believe is checked off by default. And if it is checked off, QuickBooks will not give you this option right here to change things. It will automatically default to undeposited funds, which I call a clearing account, as opposed to a temporary account. A temporary account being one like an income statement account that rolls into the income statement periodically at the end of the month or the end of the year. 
Uh, a clearing account is one that I would say clears out in a shorter period of time, having a different goal other than uh, the timing of the income statement versus the balance sheet. It's used for some specific purpose to go up and then back down to zero. So I'm gonna close that back out. That gives us the option of undeposited funds or we can put it directly into the checking account. Now note in this particular transaction, if they're giving us a $5,000 amount, then it might be the easiest thing to like post it into the checking account because it's likely that they paid us with a check or some kind of transfer that's gonna be independent in and of itself when it hits our bank account, which is more likely something that we can put into the checking account. However, we can imagine a situation if it were cash or possibly some kind of credit card transaction where they would pay us and then the credit card or the cash would be grouped together with multiple other payments before it actually went into our checking account. In that case, we don't wanna put it directly into the checking account here because doing so means that the item in our checking account will be grouped differently than what will show up on the bank statement, which will have multiple payments grouped together because the credit card company will do that or because we cashed different check amounts in one lump sum deposit. That's where the undeposited fund is gonna be quite helpful. It's also kind of helpful as well, because if you go to the homepage here, note that at this point in time, we're receiving the payment. We could deposit it directly into the checking account at that time, but if we do so, the checking account has an increase that's now not a deposit form, but a receive payment form. And the natural form to increase the checking account is a deposit form or a transfer form. And I think that's another reason like QuickBooks kind of defaults to using a deposit form as the only form other than a transfer form or journal entry, but usually the only two forms that are gonna increase the, the checking account. If you use this form, then when you look at the transaction detail, it's not gonna show as a deposit, it's gonna show as a receive payment. It's not a big problem, but it gives you a little bit more sorting you know, issues when you're trying to see all the increases if I was trying to filter by the transactions that are increasing the checking account. But the main reason you put it into undeposited funds is so that you can then group the deposits together in our system so they'll show up in our books in the same format and the same grouping as will be done on the bank statement, allowing us to check our books to the bank statement in the bank reconciliation process. So that's gonna be the general idea. So if I go back on over to the receive payment, that looks good. So what's this going to do then? If I record this, it's a customer payment. That means by definition, it's connected to an invoice. Therefore, it's gonna decrease the accounts receivable. It's gonna to link to the invoice showing the invoice has been paid. And then it's also gonna be going into some kind of cash account. We're gonna put it into the clearing account of undeposited funds and see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and record this. Now, usually there's a button to record down below, but because I'm zoomed into 150, it's not there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close it out like this and then I'm gonna save it. You have not recorded, I'm gonna say record it. Okay, then we're gonna go to the balance sheet and check it out. So, in un so we know accounts receivable went down. If I double click the accounts receivable, there's the payment. Notice it shows up in the type as a payment now. So we've got those three different names. It shows up here as a payment. If I close that out, if I go into the home page, it shows here as a receive payment. And if I go into the form, it's called a customer payment. So that's kind of weird that it has those three different kind of names, but it is what it is. A payment, it's kind of the same, I guess. They just shortened it to one. Then we've got undeposited funds. Now this fund is one that people often get messed up all the time, right? One, they don't know what the undeposited fund actually does. So they end up recording transactions twice. And two, they get kind of confused or we get kind of confused sometimes to have undeposited funds down here when it really represents cash. Because if you were to report cash on a normal balance sheet for normal reporting purposes, you would report it up top, all cash accounts up here, savings account, checking account, cash account, petty cash, and so on. But it put it down here in QuickBooks. Why? I believe it's because up here, these are not just the cash accounts, for QuickBooks, these are the checking accounts. Checking accounts have specific needs, meaning the register might be a little bit different and there are accounts that you can connect to bank feeds. The undeposited funds account doesn't connect to bank feeds, so the functionality of it is more like just an other current asset type of account as opposed to a cash 
type of account for QuickBooks. So they put it kind of down here. If you were to format your financial statements formally for external presentation, you would think that your checking account, you would rename it to just cash, right? And then group all your cash stuff together, which would include the undeposited funds. So that's a little bit confusing, but note the undeposited funds should clear out, it being a clearing account, to zero periodically once we actually make the deposit, once we take the check that's in our hand and put it into the checking account, once we keep the cash that's in our hand and take that to the bank, or once uh, we, we see the credit card transactions be grouped together in such a way that we can then post it into the checking account the same way it will appear on our bank account. So if I go in here, here's the payment of the 5,000. Let's close that back out. If I go then to the customer center, I can see that particular customer. I can then go and say, okay, Anderson Guitars, we now have the payment, there's the payment. If I go into the original invoice, which is this one, then I can see it's been paid now. So as you see this connection between the payment and the invoice, helping us to kind of tie this stuff out and the detail on the right-hand side. Closing that out, I can also go to my transactions, invoices. I can look at all invoices, or now I can look at just the open invoices, that one now having been removed. We can also take a look at one other report, which is the customer balance detail, which is kind of the same thing that you see in the customer center and you see this payment and you can see the activity by customer that we would typically expect to see. An increase with an invoice, we should be able to tick and tie off the payment, goes back down. We still have the invoice outstanding here. We expect to see the payment in the future and bring it back down to zero. That's the that's the trend. One last thing to note, if I go to the home page, note here the deposit form has this red item. That indicates that something went into undeposited funds and that can only happen with a receipt payment and a create sales receipt. That has a nice little link here. So when you make the deposit, you're gonna actually wanna use the deposit form, not the register because it'll have this pop-up that then tells you the payments that you have from the payment and the sales receipts, which you can group together if there are multiple of them so that they are grouped together in the same way as you will be depositing them into the bank. Closing this back out, closing this back out. Let's do another one. Let's this time we could go in here again, but let's go to the customer uh, center. Let's go to the customer center and then customers. And let's imagine we're going to Jones Guitars and let's imagine that they paid us so we received a payment and I'm gonna say, okay, they paid us for this invoice. I can see the 7,500. I'm gonna double click on the invoice. There's uh, the actual invoice. And then I'm gonna say, I received a payment for it. So I would like to go to received payments where it will then generate the received payment form and connect it to the applicable invoice. So there we have it. That's another way that's quite common to do the transaction. You got Jones Guitars the payment of 7,500. Let's make the date. Let's keep it there at the 118.23. And once again, it's gonna go into undeposited funds. I'm gonna keep it as cash, even though it's unlikely that 7,500 would be paid in cash, probably be a check or electronic transfer. But I wanna imagine a situation like cash or the credit card where we would have to go through that undeposited fund, grouping multiple transactions together because we're gonna deposit them into the bank in a grouped one lump sum, which is which is what we wanna be clear about so that we can match it to what's gonna happen on the bank statement, making the reconciliation as easy as possible. Notice it checked off the one that we wanted here, but it still has another one outstanding, so it shows the other invoice. If I was to double click on that invoice, you can see it here, you can see it has not yet been paid. Closing this out, what's this gonna do when we record it? It's a customer payment, therefore it's gonna decrease accounts receivable, it being connected to an invoice. The other side's gonna go into undeposited funds because we have it indicated here. I'm gonna record it by Xing out and saying yes. And then we're gonna go then to the uh, balance sheet and I can go into the accounts receivable. And so now we've got this other one, this was, uh, this was Jones, if I drill down on that, takes us back to the customer payment, back to the source document. So that looks good. The other side's in undeposited funds, going into undeposited funds. I've got two of them. If I then go to the bank and deposit these at the same time, 12,500 if it was all cash, right? Then I go to the homepage 
I can see the two deposits. I could go in here, I'm not gonna record it, but I can go in here, that pop-up shows those two, so I can then deposit them as one lump sum, which, if that's the way it was gonna show on the bank statement, is how I want would want to do it. Closing it back out, closing it back out. If we go to the customer center on the left-hand side, going to the customer for Jones, now we've got that that invoice i can see all transactions all transactions i could filter it by invoice here for example and so i could have all invoices uh for the whole i gotta say all again or i could look at just open invoices for example this is the only one open now i'm going to go back to all transactions the the invoice that was paid off was this one was this one so if i double click on it it says paid so it's been paid. We can see some more detail on the right hand side here. So I'm going to close this back out. And if I go into transactions on the right side, invoices, here we got, we have open invoices and versus all invoices. We can also have overdue invoices. We don't have any of those. Let's go back to, to all invoices. All right, let's do another one. This time we'll do it this way. We're, we're, there's multiple ways we can get there. We could go to the home page. We could go receive payment and we're going to say we received it from Smith Guitars this time. Uh, but I'm going to do it this way. Go to the customer center. The other way we could do it as we did last time is go to the customer and say, okay, uh, Smith Guitars is here and then go to all transactions and all. This is the invoice that we got a payment for. So we can open that and say receive payment from there, generating the receive payment from the invoice. Or I could go to transactions, look at the invoices and say, I would like to look at open invoices and then pick up the one I'm looking for, Smith Guitars. Let's do it this way this time. Opening up Smith Guitars. And then I'm gonna close the icon on the right. I'm going to then say receive payment because I'm gonna imagine that we got a payment of $8,000. We'll imagine it's cash again, but probably a check or, or a transfer of some kind but we're going to say smith guitars it populates for us due date on 118 or the the date we'll keep there cash i'm going to keep that the same because i'm going to imagine we group these together when we make a deposit it's going into undeposited funds if i double click on the invoice there's the invoice that was used to generate the payment what's this going to do when recorded it's going to decrease the accounts receivable that's what a customer payment does linking it to the invoice showing the invoice as paid and then the other side is going to go into undeposited funds increasing in essence a cash account even though it's an other current asset type of account i'm going to record it by saying x out a tub and say yes i want you to record it and then we're going to go to the balance sheet and then I can go into the receivables, double clicking on the receivables. There's Smith Guitars. I can double click on it, drilling back down to Smith Guitars. I can uh, close this back out. I can then close this back out. We could go to the, to the well, let's go to the undeposited funds. Undeposited funds has 20,500 in it. We're imagining we're sitting on a pile of cash like Scrooge McDuck or something. But we need to take that to the bank because that's really not safe. You shouldn't have a whole thing of cash in like a box that you swim in or anything. That doesn't that's gonna attract criminals. So you so we're gonna take it to the so we've got that. And then if you go to the customer balance here, we could see the activity for Jones. So there's the payment. Total is now at the 822150, which should tie out to the balance sheet which is at 822150 that looks good if i go to the customer center then the first tab we've got smith we've got the payment and the invoice looks like we got the payment on it if i go into the invoice it says it's been paid that looks good i can see more detail from the activity on the right hand side you've got also a nice little c history thing here you can say you can see you know a little track record of what happened the invoice created and the 800 received and so on but and then we got to deposit it so right we haven't gotten to that point yet so i'm going to close this back out and then i'm going to close this back out and so that is that we can also see it in the transactions area invoices so i could look for all invoices i could look for the open invoices now so these are the ones that are open the ones that were there from the beginning balances those are the ones that we're basically receiving the payments on at this point and then if i go to the home page now we've got these three items 
if I click on it, if I was to deposit all of them, imagining their cash, a lot of cash, then we could deposit them all at one time, grouping them together. I won't do that quite yet, but that would be a large deposit. And if that's how it's gonna show up on the bank statement, that's how we'd wanna group it in our books so that we can easily reconcile our books to the bank. So I know everybody's probably itching to make that deposit right now. I would be because I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be holding on to this 20,000 with all those crazy people out there these days gonna try to rob me or something, but we're gonna wait till a future presentation to do that. So hold off on that right now. For now, we'll go to, let's go to the trial balance and just check our numbers. Let's go to the accounting trial balance and then take this from 01012312123, customize the report fonts and numbers let's bring it up to like let's bring it up to 16 that's we've never done that before this is like this is unheard of the notches that we've brought it up to so there we have it so you can check your numbers here and if anything does not tie out you probably want to adjust the date range and then uh, if you see something that's off by date or any other factor possibly drill down on it by double clicking on the item this one doesn't have anything in it. Let's go to the cash. That always has stuff happening. Cash is cash is crazy like a popular nightclub. You got people stuff in there all the time. So then so then you can change the date or whatever needs to be changed. So we're going to close this back out. Close this back out. There and there it is.